Gentlemen, please welcome the mayor of the city of Chicago, the Honorable Richard M. Daly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 36 years ago, another mayor for whom this plaza is named led a young senator from Massachusetts in a magnificent torchlight parade on the eve of the presidential election. And the next day, Chicago and Illinois made the difference for John F. Kennedy, who went on to make a difference for America. We had hoped to be there again four years later to re-elect President Kennedy. But tragically, that day never came. And the Democratic Party suffered a generation to come. Today, we're, we're ready to march again behind a young president who has inspired us and steered our party and our nation back on track. While, while his opponent hurls insults, Here. years, four more years, four more years, four more years, while his opponent hurls insults, President Clinton offers ideas and real accomplishments. Like President Kennedy, President Clinton understands that a new world demands new thinking. He has shown the courage to challenge the old ways of doing things in Washington while remaining true to our most important values and commitments. And by focusing his attention on real issues affecting our communities instead of the abstractions of Washington, he has made a real difference for all the people. So, Mr. President, we will be there for you next Tuesday. But I, have, but I have every confidence that, unlike President Kennedy, you won't have to wait for the returns from Chicago on Wednesday morning to claim victory. <laughs> Now, it's my great pleasure to introduce a colleague and a friend. When I was in the State Senate working to repeal sales tax on food and medicine, one of the strongest allies in the State House was Carol Mosey Braun. And in that battle was just one reflection of her deep and abiding commitment to the working families of Illinois. As United States Senator, she has continued to fight to focus the attention on the policymakers in Washington on the important issues facing working families in their everyday lives. She has led the fight in the Senate for a national commitment to rebuilding crumbling public school buildings throughout our country. And President Clinton has embraced that fight. She worked for new laws to protect the pension rights of women, which the President signed. And she has been there for Chicago and Illinois whenever and wherever we have asked. It is my great pleasure to introduce the soon to be the senior senator from the state of Illinois, my friend, Carol Mosey Braun. Carol? changed his vote. Henry Byrne changed his vote and voted aye for suffrage because his mother told him to. He changed his vote because she had written him a letter saying, vote for suffrage. 
And I say to each of you tonight, thank you for coming out. Thank you for doing what you do to help re-elect Bill Clinton, President of the United States. Because just as Mrs. Byrne made a difference with her phone call, and just like her letter, rather, and Mr. Byrne made a difference with his one vote, each vote makes a difference. Every person makes a difference. We're going to get the votes out for Bill Clinton, for Dick Durbin, and for this Democratic ticket. All of you have come out tonight, have given of your time to share with this president as we head into the last eight days before the election. The real issue for this election will be turnout. The real issue for this election will be getting people to the polls. And I don't mean P-O-L-L-S. The polls where people actually vote the polls where people actually go and cast their vote and express who they want to serve in government. We have the most important election heading into the next century that we, our whole nation's future depends on it. It depends on Bill Clinton and Al Gore leading us across that bridge to the future. It depends on Dick Durbin making the difference in the Senate to succeed Paul Simon. It depends on Democrats in the Congress helping to make certain that Newt Gingrich is not speaker anymore. I'm sorry, I couldn't risk. It depends on Democratic office holders, and you are going to make the difference because just like Mrs. Byrne, between now and Election Day, you're going to go out and talk to your neighbors and talk to your friends and tell them that their vote makes a difference. You're going to be the foot soldiers. You will make the difference. You will head America in the right direction for the 21st century. Thank you so much. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Braun. There are many good reasons to vote next Tuesday. We want to reelect our great president who has steered our nation onto the right course. Bill Clinton has the courage and vision to challenge the old ways of doing things in Washington, while remaining true to our important values and our commitments. And Mr. President, rest assured that we all will be out bright and early next Tuesday to cast our votes for you. We want to elect our congressmen, state legislators, our county candidates who know the problems and concerns for all our communities. We want to elect the Democrats up and down the line, like prosecutors like Dick Devine, local officials, Jesse White, Ori Puchinski, who are in touch with the people of all our neighborhoods. We want to be sure to elect the members of Congress and the State General Assembly. Illinois needs the skilled common sense leadership of Dick Durbin in the United States Senate. Dick Durbin, Dick Durbin knows that Durbin, Durbin, Durbin. Dick Durbin knows the most fundamental obligation in government is to protect the health and safety of our people and help people to get the tools they need to make the most of their lives. So Dick Durbin stood up in Congress for a ban on the assault weapons. Dick Durbin stood up for more police on our streets. He's had the guts to stand up to the tobacco industry. He has had the vision to stand up for education in college loans. Because he knows that education is the key to our future. Chicago needs Dick Durbin. Illinois needs Dick Durbin. America needs Dick Durbin. So I ask you to talk to your friends and neighbors, 
knock on every door, and make a phone call. Because the next time I introduce him, I want to be able to say, ladies and gentlemen, the Senator Dick Durbin. Dick. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, it sounds so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, your father's plaza never looked better. There are so many people in this crowd as I look around that I've met during the course of this campaign. I see my fellow candidate, Phil Torf, candidate for Congress, Elizabeth Ann Hall. Susan Hines is out here, and we're glad she is, and so many others who will be introduced in a moment. But let me tell you this, and Local 134, but let me tell you this. There's a fella named Bob Dole who is campaigning across America saying it is time for America to wake up. Well, we have news for Mr. Dole. America was wide awake when Newt Gingrich and Bob Dole attacked the school lunch program. America was wide awake when Newt Gingrich and Bob Dole wanted to cut Medicare $270 billion. America was wide awake when Newt Gingrich and Bob Dole wanted to cut Medicaid $150 billion. And America was wide awake when Newt Gingrich and Bob Dole wanted to cut college student loans and education. We were wide awake when they wanted to cut environmental protection by 25 percent. And we will never, never forget that it was Gingrich and Dole that shut down the federal government for the two longest periods in our history. And let me tell you something, Mr. President. Illinois will be wide awake for the next eight days. We're going to be wide awake, knocking on the doors, making the phone calls, talking to our friends and family to make sure that they come out for this election. Because you know why? America doesn't need another Gingrich Congress. I will tell you this. Delivering this election message is too important. Our future is too important to gamble on the politics of Newt Gingrich and Bob Dole. We want to count on a man who will lead us into the next century, a man who has led this country into economic expansion, a man who has shown that the Democrats can stand for fiscal integrity, a man who is our bridge builder to the 21st century, our president and our next president, Bill Clinton. Thank you. back in Chicago. <laughs> Senator Mosley Braun, thank you so much. And Mr. Mayor, thank you for your strong support, your friendship, and your very moving history lesson about the times when your father was here with President Kennedy. Maybe a week from tomorrow, 
we can reclaim a lot of our great hopes and take them into the 21st century with pride and energy and vigor. I want to thank Congressman Bobby Rush and Congresswoman Curtis Collins, Congressman Bill Lipinski for being here. And I know that there are some other congressional candidates other than those that Dick Durbin mentioned, Clem Balanoff, my friend Annie Davis, and Rob Blagojevich. We're going to win that seat back to Congress. Thank you, Cook County Board President John Stroger, Assessor Tom Hines, State Chair Gary LaPell, our Attorney General candidate Dick Devine. Thank you all for being here. I want to thank Kevin Cronin, Coco Taylor, the Chicago Children's Choir, the Lennox family in perfect harmony who sang for us tonight and performed. I also want you to know that in addition to Mayor Daley, we have some other mayors here. It's nearly heresy to say there is another mayor besides Mayor Daley in Chicago, but we have here a very large number of mayors from all over the Midwest who've endorsed Al Gore and Bill Clinton for re-election today, including the great mayor of the city of Detroit, Dennis Archer, who's over here. Mayor Cardi Finkbeiner of Toledo, who had a rally with 25,000 people for me late in Toledo one night. Thank you. Mayor Gordon Bush from East St. Louis. Mayor Sharon Sales Belton from Minneapolis. Mayor Kernan from South Bend, Indiana, and many others who are here. Thank all the mayors for coming and for your support. You know, on St. Patrick's Day of 1992, the people of Illinois gave me a great victory in the Democratic primary for president and sent me on the way to a nomination and to ultimate victory in November again led by the strong support of the people from Illinois and the strong support of the people from Chicago. One week from tomorrow, I want to ride home the victory for America on the shoulders of the people from Illinois one more time. I want to say to you how glad I am tonight that so many of you in this audience are young. I thank the young people for coming tonight. And I want to say how grateful I am for all the various groups of people who are represented here, the labor people, the business people, the union leaders, the veterans leaders, the Haitian Americans, the Asian Americans, the African Americans, the Hispanic Americans, the Irish Americans, the Polish Americans, all of us. And then all the rest of us like me and whatever's left. I say that because you will have to make two great decisions in that election a week from tomorrow. It is the last election of the 20th century and the first presidential election of the 21st century. And you must decide whether in that election you believe our best days are before us, you believe, as I do, we are entering a great age of possibility, and you are determined to see us build a bridge to the future, not a bridge to the past. And then you must decide as you look around this great crowd tonight, whether we are going forward in that future together. How many times have we seen America be put back when we became divided against one another? But when all these different people here show up in one crowd and join hands with shared values, shared hopes, and shared dreams, respecting our differences, and cherishing our common values, there is nothing that can stop America. We're going forward together into that 21st century. You know, I remember so many things over the last four years, and I always get 
terribly nostalgic when I come to Chicago. But I want to say a few things about what's happened that affect you and your decision that involve Dick Durbin. You know, when I came here four years ago, even though Hillary was from Chicago, you sort of took me on faith. Well, now there is a record. Today, we announced that the deficit, which was $290 billion when I took office, has dropped all four years for the first time in the 20th century and is now going to be $107 billion this year. Now, for you, for you, that's meant lower interest rates. It means more investment and more jobs. It means lower car payments, low home, lower home mortgage payments. It means lower college loan payments. That's what that means. Now, when we were debating the economic plan in 1993, all of our friends on the other side, all of our friends on the other side voted against it. They said it would increase the deficit. They said it would wreck the economy. They said it was a terrible thing. Dick Durbin voted for it and provided the decisive vote. His courage has given us the economy we have today, and he deserves your vote for the United States Senate. Not only that, this is about more than economics. The FBI reported last week that crime is at a 10-year low in America, that crime has gone down in each of the last four years. Now, we all know it's still too high, but it's moving in the right direction. And one reason is our administration has formed a partnership with the city of Chicago, the other cities represented here. We're putting 100,000 more police on the street. We're taking assault weapons off the street. We passed the Brady Bill. We passed the Brady Bill. The Brady Bill has kept 60,000 felons, fugitives, and stalkers from getting handguns. And we just said, if you beat up your spouse or your child, you can't buy a handgun either. That's what we did. Now, the leaders of the other party, they fought us. The toughest crime bill in history with all the law enforcement organizations in the country behind it, and they wouldn't help. They fought us. They said we were going to take people's guns away, and they walked away from a historic opportunity to make our children, our streets, our neighborhoods, our schools, our homes safer. But Dick Durbin didn't walk away. He stood up to bat and helped us hit it out of the park. And that's why the crime rate's down and why he has earned your support for the United States Senate for the future of Illinois. Will you help him? Folks, you heard Senator Mosley Braun and Congressman Durbin talking about the budget fight we had before. We did have a difficult budget fight. They did shut the government down. They wanted to cut education on the verge of the 21st century. They wanted to paralyze our ability to protect the environment. They wanted to remove a 30-year guarantee of health care to poor families, to older people in nursing homes, to families who have members with disabilities. They wanted to take all of it away. We said no. They shut the government down. We said no again. But the real reason it worked is that people like Dick Durbin were there to say, we're going to uphold the president's veto. We're not going to let him divide our country and take us back. So now you have the future out there. You have the future out there, and you have to decide, are we going to balance the budget in a way that protects our investment in our future and our obligations to each other? Or are we going to adopt their risky tax scheme that would blow a hole in the deficit, raise taxes on 9 million people, and bring back all those cuts again even more? We're going to do the right thing and balance the budget and build that bridge to the 21st century. That's what we're going to do. Are we going to do the right thing? Are we going to do the right thing 
and keep going until we put those 100,000 police on the street, help the cities take on the gangs, ban those bullets whose only purpose is to pierce the bulletproof vest of police officers. Let's do the right thing and keep building that bridge to the 21st century. Are we going to do the right thing and keep protecting our environment and clean up all those toxic waste dumps that are threatening our children's future? Let's don't turn back. Let's build that bridge to the 21st century. Are we going to do the right thing and help our families? Are we going to expand the family leave law so that parents can go to their children's parent conferences at the school and take their kids to the doctor? I think we're going to do the right thing. Are we going to do the right thing and open the doors of college education to all Americans? We want, we want to see all of our children learning in our schools. We want to see every 12-year-old able to hook up to the Internet. And we want to see every 18-year-old in America able to go to college. If you give us a chance, that's what we'll do. And finally, are we going to do the right thing about going forward together? Look around this crowd tonight. Just look around. Look around. We've got all kinds of people here tonight. We even have some folks here for the other candidates tonight. You're welcome. We're glad to have you here. We're glad you're here. Look around. Now you th just think, just think about this world we're moving into. The Cold War in the background. No Russian missiles pointed at the children of the United States for the first time since the dawn of the nuclear age. But what threatens us? Racial, ethnic, religious, tribal hatred, terrorism fueled by those hatreds. People all over the world who believe their life only has meaning if they can look down on someone else. At least I'm not in that racial group, that ethnic group, that religious group. Look at the Middle East and Northern Ireland and Bosnia and Rwanda and Burundi and Haiti and all these places where the United States has tried to stand up for freedom and human dignity and peace. We dare not let that happen here. It should be thrilling to you that you can look around this crowd and see Americans from every continent. It should be thrilling to you that, except for the Native Americans, we all come from someplace else, and we need to respect each other. And so I say to you, that future out there in the 21st century will be the greatest age of human possibility we've ever known. More of our children will have a chance to live out their dreams than any time in history if we make the right decisions. The decision we make a week from tomorrow will have a profound impact on how we go into that new century, on whether we say we're going forward together or whether we say you're on your own, on whether we say I hope you can make it, but we're too busy to help. Or what do we say? We do think it takes a village to raise our children and build our future, and we're going to do it. And so I say to you, probably no person in history who was not a child of Illinois has ever loved this state more or owed more to it than I do. But I ask you one last time, one week from tomorrow, let's build that bridge to the 21st century. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you.